Hello, my name is Olayunka Yeni and I'm from Bevo Consult. Today I'm going to be um, talking about deploying an application load balancer. So this is what you need. You need at least two servers to be, be currently running because we are going to add those two servers into a target group. So now let's continue. I'm currently in my Amazon AWS console then you click on services and go to ec2 because load balancer it's uh, on the ec2 on the left hand side you scroll all the way down to load balancing this is the load balancing then you click on load balancer okay we want to create a new load balancer so this is what we do we click on create load balancer we have three different types of load balancer but what we are doing today is to create an application load balancer. So you click on create. This is where we have different options to put into our AWS services, like the name of the load balancer. So this is where you put in the name of your load balancer. And the next one is also called scheme. Do you want your load balancer to be facing the internet or you want to use it internally within your application? But today, we are creating an internet facing load balancer load balancer so we need to create an internet facing and also we have this ip address type if you want ipv4 or you want a dual stack which means is your load balancer is going to have ipv4 and both ipv6 but for now we're creating ipv4 address we want to attach ipv4 address to our load balancer so here you have the listener which parts or which protocol do you want your load balancer to be listening on? Um, most load balancer in the enterprise world listen to listen uh, listening from HTTPS, which is 443. But for this lecture today, we are just going to listen on HTTP, which is on port 80. Because if you select HTTPS, you are going to require to put in what is called a certificate, and we don't have now, and we don't have that. So we are just going to create one listener and your load balancer can listen on multiple parts. So all you need to do is to add additional listener, like add this listener. But for today, we are only going to listen on HTTP port 80. And the next section is how many availability zone uh, do you want to attach to your load balancer? But for now, we are going to select the default VPC, which has one, two, three, four, five, six different availability zones. You are going to select all the AZ groups and the tag. This is where you put in the name that you want, you know, just like adding a name to it. Next thing is to click on configure secure ready group. And remember, application load balancer, you need to attach a security group to an application load balancer. Next, we want to you can create a new secure ready group or select from existing, but we are going to create a new one. A security group name is going to be test load balancer. You can add anything to the description based on what you feel. And since the load balancer is going to be listening on port 80, you want to open port 80 from the internet. This, this is um, um, H, uh, this is HTTP and port 80 from anywhere. So which means you are expecting uh, this load balancer to uh, receive traffic on port 80. The same pr process, you can add additional rule to it, but we are just going to leave it on port 80. Next thing next is to configure routing. This is to configure the other end of your load balancer. Remember, you need to create a target group because you need to create a group which will enable you to add different servers into this group. That this that is the um, uh, that is like a group that will be connected on the back end of your load balancer. So you can add multiple groups to one load balancer in the back end. So for now, we don't have a target group. You're going to create what is called a target group and the name is going to be test again test target group 
and what type of target are you adding to this group you have the difference to choose between instance IP and lambda so I'm going to choose an instance what protocol do you want the load balancer to be communicating to this target we want port 80 and this L checks just leave it as default and also you have what is called advanced L L settings this is where you have the parts, you have the threshold, you have all these. I think you guys should have known this in AWS uh, uh, um, documentation. And if you want more information on that, just click on this icon. It's going to give you more information on that. So next step is to register your target. Right now we have a target group. We need to register a target into the target group. And guess what? I only have one EC2 instance running, but I can also turn on my two additional EC2 instance so that I can add them to this um, to this server. I mean to the target group. So let let's refresh this page and see if we can add those additional two target. Ah, oh, now we have to go back all over again. My bad. So let me just do it. Tests, internet facing, port listener. Let me uh, select all this again. But please make sure your your uh, your servers are on before you create your load balancer. Okay, please, so that you won't have to go through all this all over again. Select new, tests, tests, uh, TCP, HTTP port 80 this is is the same configure routing new target group tests if uh, instance but 80 leave this as it is click on register target oh uh, now we have our two servers running if you're going to cl click select the server that you want to add to this target you click on register target then you click on next you click is review this is where you can check what what you've done so far and next thing is to click on create Let's go to close and see our load balancer. This is where you have the description of your load balancer. You have the DNS name. You have the state, which means this load balancer is still in process. You know, it's, it's provisional. The load balancer type is application. It is internet facing. It is using IPv4. And these are the different availability zone that is connected to the load balancer and also it's uh, connected to this secure ready group and all these are the attributes then the next thing is to go to the listener so this is where you check which port your load balancer is listening to and which target group your load balancer is forwarding the, tra the traffic to right now we are listening on port 80 and we are forwarding the target um, the traffic on port 80 to to test target group click on test this is your target group uh, group details you go to target this is where you see if your servers are healthy so they are still coming up right now so let's wait a little bit and click on refresh and how do you know that your load balancer is working accordingly so if you are able to browse the DNS name of, of your load balancer and it takes you to the IP address, uh, and it takes you to the web page of your servers, then that means that everything is working well. But, but right now it's still not going through. Let's see what's going on. Let me refresh my servers. My servers are running. The servers are still initializing, so we need to wait a little bit to let everything come up. Let me go back to listeners and check if my targets are healthy. They are still, they are still uh, booting up anyway. And also, where do you set the load balancer stickiness? Okay, you go to target group and you go to group details. This is where you you set the stickiness attribute on that your, your target group you go to group details you see the attributes this is where you enable your stickiness 
Stickiness is disabled by default on application load balancer, so you might need to enable stickiness and set in the time that you want. So you, you can set one day, I mean, and uh, you can also get the, the definition of stickiness from Amazon, you know, uh, um, services. Right now, the DNS of my load balancer is taking me to one of the servers which has this IPs and also anytime I refresh it takes me it should take me to another um, uh, server but this is to tell you that the load balancer is working guys let me know if you guys have any questions or comments or concern thank you